So I think social annotation would be an interesting addition to a number of our courses. Let me just play this quick uh, YouTube video. And hopefully in the beginning, we spoke turning thoughts into things that others could hear. Then we wrote, sharing our thinking forward in time and outward in all directions. Knowledge began to accelerate, to accumulate. We printed, and in just 60 years, over 20 million copies of books and texts were produced. An explosion spread across Europe and to the furthest corners of the world. In 1945, a scientist named Vannevar Bush dreamed of an early web and browser. He foresaw trailblazers that would connect the world's information. Almost 50 years later, in 1993, Mark Andreessen and Eric Bina built collaborative annotation into Mosaic, the first graphical web browser, so that every page could be the launchpad for discussion of its content. And then they turned it off. Over the next 20 years, more than 50 projects tried to bring this vision back to life, but they were hindered by early technologies, short-term thinking, a lack of control over spam, and poor design. A small group of dreamers started to ask, why couldn't we do better? They imagined a revolutionary new capability, a new layer over the web. Based on open standards, controlled by internet citizens instead of website owners, with a vision of serving all of humanity. They imagined the ability to point inside anything, pages, documents, pictures, video, and even data. The ability to contribute your own thinking anywhere without restriction, even when the comments are disabled. The ability to link into and share ideas and to preserve these links and connections forever. They called it open annotation. Out of this dream, a tiny nonprofit called Hypo Okay, so um, we can stop it there, but I do want to go back and uh, just scroll back a little bit here. where uh, the whole idea with these annotation tools and, and the rest of the video gets kind of over the top. So, but I, I think it gets the point across that um, we all have, you know, web pages, other resources that we try to make available to our students. These annotation tools provide a layer over the top where you and your students can um, jointly put annotations of various kinds onto um, as an overlay over that over that content. So we've got the annotation, we've got open annotation, and this is social annotation because you know it's groups of people who are working together to um, commonly mark up and annotate various kinds of documents. Now this, this uh, video is for uh, the Hypothesis platform, which we also have uh, embedded into Moodle. But what I want to focus on today is just, um, is the Perusall uh, platform that we also have embedded into uh, Moodle. So let me get back to my notes here. So um, we can go in, for example, into my sandbox. I want to pull up just a quick, simple uh, example using the hypothesis tool, but I will spend most of the time focusing on annotation with perusal. But for example, I could want to send my students to this uh, web page at the Planetary Society about uh, you know what is the habitable zone. It's got, you know, some content for the students to work through. If I were going to tell students to, you know, print this out and annotate it, they could mark up in the margins, they could make notes, they could come across, you know, whatever, and, and want to make notes on it. With the idea of social annotation, we now have a situation where uh, students can collaborate and can combine. So here's the same web page, but think about over the top of this web page, there is this annotation layer 
And as we scroll through here, um, there are all these annotations. And so if I click here, we can see, oh, somebody commented on this life as we know it. And I can come out and, oh, it was Olga at the last workshop who said, you know, well, what about life as we don't know it? Maybe there are life forms out there that don't need water. Or, um, you know, Emily made, made this comment. So that's in a nutshell what we're talking about with the ability to do this social annotation. Um, want to stop at this point and just throw it out. Uh, what are different ways you might see using this kind of functionality around the uh, readings that you've put together, the resources that you've put together for your course? And uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing so that we can be a little bit more social as we talk about this. Janice. I actually have a question first, um, yeah. just to clarify. So when multiple students, let's say, make a comment or an, uh, annotate the same sentence, uh, does it show up in different colors, like track changes? Um, that's a good point. We will be looking at perusal. We'll have to take a look at that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I can just, uh, I can you know, think of using it for a couple of assignments. Definitely, uh, there's, there's one assignment in my Fundamentals of Arts Management class where I have them um, write arts reviews, but re before I have them write arts reviews, I have them read arts reviews. And we analyze them usually in class with, via small group discussion, but I could see us, uh, I could see them, you know, uh, analyzing the reviews using this tool. Yep. Um, yeah. So that would be one way. Other ideas? Dara. Oh, you're muted, Dara. <laughs> Thank you. Can students with the tool be divided into like smaller reading groups? Yes. Okay. And, and in fact, the, um, that's built directly into the perusal tool, which is, I mean, I, I, I showed the example with hypothesis, which again is also present in our Moodle system. Uh, and it's, I mean, if you just had like one web page or one little resource you wanted your students to annotate, Perusall um, and Hypothesis would be a quick and easy way to do it. But Perusall, as we'll see, is a, is a more robust annotation platform. And yeah, you can break your students up into smaller groups. Because let's imagine you had one document of, of uh, you know, five pages long and you had a class of 80 students and you turn them all loose on annotating that document, there would soon be not a single scrap of real estate that you know, probably didn't have an annotation on it, right? Mm -hmm. And so by default, uh, Perusall takes that into account and will break your class into smaller manageable collections of students. And on any given assignment, students will only see the annotations from you know, others in their group mm -hmm. for, that, for that assignment. Mm -hmm. So that okay. keeps it more manageable. Yeah, so you could potentially have, you know, assign a reading for the following week's lecture, divide into, you know, 10 reading groups, have two of them maybe present ideas based on the annotations, sort of, you know, a quick presentation to the class, summary of the main ideas, questions for further discussion, and kind of lead a discussion maybe. And actually with Perusall, you could have, um, you could set up an, a class reading for it to be annotated. Mm -hmm. socially annotated by students, but specifically only assign it to say three out of your whatever number of students. And they're responsible for annotating and then, as you say, presenting the article in the following week. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And then could you then make those, once that, you know, those three groups are done with one article, could you make their annotations available for others to look at in the class? Uh, yeah, you could. Um, you could assign them to be the ones that are annotating. The students who aren't assigned to annotate would still be able to read the resource. And even before class, they would be able to see the annotations that the assigned students are, are highlighting on the article. So that everyone comes to class prepared with the kind of background initial analysis of the article. Uh -huh. The responsible students continue to uh, lead the discussion 
and then everyone can go back and review the article later and you know uh, not only review the article but also review the annotation comments that uh, students can put on it. Okay. So let me let me share my desktop again so we can go back in and I can actually walk you through some of this. Uh, if you do um, you know, look at the workshop notes later. There are a couple of, of resources here. There's an article that was published in the CUNY Academic Commons, Commons about the uh, you know pedagogical uses of uh, annotation tools. So this might give you some ideas about how. And you can see this article by itself is uh, is annotated. And you could see, uh, you know, some of the public comments that are on uh, on that. Uh, similarly, uh, the hypothesis group has this 10 ways to annotate with students document that you might find useful. Um, some of these are a little bit more marginal, but I mean, clearly you can, you can, seed the documents that you want your students to read with some of your annotations so that, you know, if you want, if, if you know the students are coming up to a particular passage and you want them to focus on specific uh, aspects of that passage, you could put an annotation on there to kind of direct the students as they're reading. And even though you're not there sitting, you know, looking over their shoulder, it provides you a way to kind of guide them through the readings as they're doing the readings. Um, you know, maybe you have a jargon rich article um, in chemistry and you want to assign students to create um, glossary entries for some of the more difficult terms so that other uh, students as they're reading through the article, you know, have that, that explanatory material right there. Have students ask questions, do close readings, et cetera. So again, you might want to take a look at this document to get some ideas about how you might use uh, Perusall. So let me just click you, give you a quick overview um, to Perusall. I won't click on all of these links. I'll just say that this actually started as a uh, research into teaching and learning project at Harvard University. And so several of the faculty members there were interested in this whole idea of getting students to collaborate on course readings and providing um, a robust platform uh, for them to use in their courses. And uh, the project was so successful, they kind of spun it off into this um, third-party platform that, that we've now integrated into our Moodle system. Um, I won't bother going into the business model or anything, but um, I mean, there is a way that you can tie this into many commercial texts that you would want to use. And we'll look at that. Um, open educational resources, web pages. If you have PDF documents, uh, you can put them up into your perusal course space for your Moodle course and, and make them all available to your students. Um, again, you might be interested in clicking on this instructor guide if you really want to de um, dig in a little bit deeper um, for using perusal in your Moodle course. So, um, I think what I will do is first, I know I'm going to use Perusall for my fall class. So I'm going to add the basic resource um, for Perusall into my fall course. So it's ready there and I can show you the steps of adding it. But then I'm going to move over into a sandbox course to go into the nuts and bolts of uploading materials and creating assignments and so forth. Does that sound like a plan? I'll take silence as a yes, I guess. It's a dangerous, <laughs> yes, it's fine. dangerous Sounds, thing yes, to do. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> yes. That's good. Thank you, Keith. Uh, so um, <laughs> let me just go into my fall course shell here. Um, 
and I will probably rearrange this. I probably won't set it up as weeks and so forth, but um, we have peruse all set up as a um, highlighted activity that you can add. If you've got editing turned on, you can go to you know, the place where you add an activity or resource. Peruse all is actually a, uh, one of the external tools that we have added into Moodle. But I'm hoping that it will be used so much that we've actually set it up as you don't have to go to the generic external tool and configure it. You can just select Peruse all social annotation and um, gives you a little bit of a description here, lets you set up a Peruse all group for your class, and then you can upload your course resources into that space rather than putting them directly into Moodle, and then you can build annotation assignments around them. So I'll just select that. Uh, get to the point where I can actually see the add button. And uh, let me go back to full screen. So um, pretty much all you need to do to add uh, this peruse all link in your course is to give it a name. Uh, and I think for my full course, I'll call it uh, social annotation library. Um, it's already configured with the all of the parameters that are needed to connect um, to from our Moodle core uh, um, server to the um, Peruse all uh, platform. For this Peruse all activity, I'm going to uncheck the accept grades from tools so that this kind of general connection won't show up in my grade book. And I'll click save and return to course. Um, for those of you, do any of you use, for example, VoiceThread? It's another one of these external tools. And when you add VoiceThread to one of your courses uh, in Moodle, it will you can set up a corresponding course space at your at VoiceThread. Same thing here with Peruse All, but just by adding this external tool activity, uh, let me check to make sure I set it up to, I like to have things, um, open in to, a new window, which I think we've set up as the default, but let me just select that to just confirm. So if I click on this link now, I have a whole perusal course that's been set up that parallels my Moodle course. Okay, so here's my Moodle course for Search for Life in the Universe. And now I have a search for life in the universe, fall 2020, peruse all course space. It tells me that this was created from Moodle. So it's got that tie in. And as the instructor, you will see a kind of getting started. So it kind of walks you through um, creating um, a link to the LMS, which we've already done, setting a course start and end date, adding documents, creating assignments. Um, we'll go through this process in my sandbox, but you have a, a, a document space where you can upload some or all of the documents that you're going to be using in your uh, course. And these can be they can be web pages. They can be documents that you upload from your computer. They could be, uh, you know, these could be like a PDF of an article. Um, there are a number of textbook publishers that ha are um, collaborating with this project so that if you select their textbook, you can actually bring their whole textbook into your document library in peruse all and set up annotation uh, assignments around that. How would we know what textbooks were available? 
If you click on textbook, you'll basically go oh. to a place where you can search. Great, thank you. Um, and again, as I said, we'll set up assignments and so forth uh, in my sandbox. I just do want to go over, let me check my, uh, I do want to go through some of these options for course settings because they deal with some issues we already talked about. So um, on the general, it uh, your peruse all course space will inherit the course title from your Moodle course uh, and the institution. It will not pull up the course start and end dates from Moodle. So you probably want to go in and set those. Um, having peruse all release scores to the Moodle gradebook only after you've manually released them is probably a good idea. There is a default welcome message that students see when they click in to the peruse all course space from Moodle. If you want to leave that as is, you can leave it as is. If you want to customize that, put your own spin on uh, your own take on the welcome message to your students. Maybe talk about how you see this fitting into your, your uh, Moodle course. You can update that text on this general settings page. Um, access, uh, really don't need to do anything there. We talked about groupings. So if you've got, um, A, a class of 60 students, you obviously don't want all 60 students working as a large group uh, annotating the articles we talked about. So you can, um, you can decide what target group size you would like to use. You can provide the enrollment estimate for your course. So I'll have about 60 students in my Life in the Universe course. So I can go ahead and change that now. Maybe I want the annotations group sizes to be a little bit smaller, maybe 10 instead of 20. And uh, um, scoring is uh, peruse all has some artificial intelligence built into it and will take an initial stab at scoring the students annotations for you. So if you are dealing with a large class, you can rely to a greater or lesser extent on the uh, AI grading of students annotation activities so that you can scale this activity up uh, to a large group. Uh, you can set the default, how many annotations you want students to on average provide on a given document. Um, by looking at the annotations, the uh, AI engine will kind of score them as minimal, adequate, and better, and you can, you know, determine how you want those to be scored. Um, by default, the scoring by Perusall is really just looking at their annotations, but they also have this holistic option, which they actually recommend. So let's say you're requiring all of your students to do five annotations to meet their requirement for annotating, for contributing annotations. If a student does all five of those in the first paragraph and then does nothing with the rest of the document, they're really not contributing a lot to the conversation uh, around the document. So if you switch to holistic, it will bring into uh, play other um, items like uh, how spread out across the article their annotations are, how much their annotations are getting responses from other students. Uh, there's an upvoting, all sorts of things. I've not, I mean, let me just back up and say this uh, functionality is new. I haven't had a, a chance yet to actually put it through its paces in, in my classes. That's what I'm planning to do for the fall. So there are a lot of options here that we're not gonna 
touch in detail in this workshop, but I just want you to, to make sure that you're aware of them. Do students see these? Uh... The settings? Breakdown, the, the breakdowns? Uh, that I'm not sure. We can get a student view um, a little bit later. I don't think the student, if, if I'm in the peruse all class from the student view, I'm not seeing any of these setting options here. Okay. Okay. And so then, Keith, yeah, go you, ahead. Used, you used the annotation content only and not the holistic before? Um, this basically will say, okay, the students are assigned five annotations to do. Uh, has a student done all five of those? And what kind, what value does the AI engine put on each of them? If there were, if there were four really good annotations and one crappy one, you know, the students would get eight points. That's if they're just being graded on the annotation content only. But those five annotations, again, could be in the first sentence of the article. And, and if you don't, if you want to discourage that kind of behavior, yeah. you would do the holistic and, and bring in some of these other factors. Okay. So, um, so. One more question, Keith, um, yep. about the grouping. Are the students grouped randomly or can you uh, the students would be grouped, have control? I th you have either automatic or manual grouping uh, options available to you. Okay. Uh, so if you wanted to do it manually, you could do that. I think by default, and again, I haven't used this in my class. Uh, if you did the automatic, I think um, there might actually be a separate grouping for every assignment you set up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that students aren't always seeing the same annotations yes. from the mm -hmm. same students. All right. But okay. I, would, I would need to confirm that when I actually use it this fall with uh, a whole set of real students. Okay. So that's basically the getting started. Again, if you want to add this, um, let me just go ahead and. Uh... You can ask a question as well. Yeah. Did you have experience, or what in your experience, um, what size group did you find helpful? Uh, I don't know that there's any fast and firm rule that you can apply across all documents. It might be that the more difficult the document is, you might want to vary the overall size of the groups. But I think for all of us just beginning to get our feet wet with this, um, you know, if you've got a class of 15, I don't see any reason why not just to have all of your students see everyone's annotations all the time. Mm. I've got a class of 60, uh, having 60 students share annotations on, you know, a four page document is going to be overwhelming. So I'm, and, and these are mostly non-majors. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go, that, that, tw that size of 20 is kind of the recommendation from the Harvard team based on their experience. Hmm. But, uh, so you could just leave it at 20 and you know, put in, I could have my enrollment is 60 students, we'll leave the 20 default group size and then for any, uh, article I'm having the students annotate, there would be basically three separate groups of students who are kind of working together on that document. Mm -hmm. Can um, I ask something? Yeah. Um, this may seem, I'm sorry if this is too, these are really primitive questions, but the first one is if, if the students annotated, do, do their names come up in the annotations? How does that work? You can make it anonymous. Um, it kind of defeats well, it depends on, on what your goal is for the annotation. There is an option mm -hmm. for doing uh, anonymous annotation. Mm -hmm. But if, um, you know, if we're talking about, personally, I think if we're talking about trying to develop a community of learners around our, in our class, then uh, having the students names associated with their annotation helps the students begin to 
feel in my mind that they're part of a, a group that is working on making meaning out of these documents. Okay, that makes sense. So if the, and in terms of the scoring, um, so if I have five students, Mary and Joe and whoever, yeah. the, the scoring um, keeps track of which student, right? Right. Uh, it's, it's keyed in and you don't have to do anything to make it do that. It just does it automatically. Right. right. So perusal would keep track of, uh, okay, well, Mary did four annotations. The goal for the article was five and Mary's four annotations. They're all pretty good. So they all got a two. So Mary gets, you know, eight out of 10. That's kind of just the default from the AI. You can always override that at any point before. The and that just feeds into their grade, their grade. Yeah. Now, I would recommend you set it up so that the grades that show up in Perusal don't go to the Moodle gradebook until you release them. You know, and you, you've got a chance yeah. to kind of review what Mary did and said, well, you know, AI, you're, you're not quite in the same where I would be, I'm going to give Mary a nine out of 10 instead of eight out of 10 and override right. that before it goes to the Moodle grade book. And that we can do. And, and also where does that document live? Sorry. Where does that document live that you were showing us that has all the different, you know, um, all that stuff, this document, where does that live? Uh, it's in my Google drive, but, uh, I, you might've joined zoom after I shared that link. Um, yeah, I was a little late. That's okay. Sorry about that. Uh, paste it in here again. So yeah, if you click on that link, you'll get to this Google doc. Okay, great. Thank you. So, um, that's, setting it up again if you are uh i i i would plan to have one perusal link that is just the general here's a link to our perusal space that i'm going to plan to put at the top of my fall class and all this all this link does is it gets me and my students over to where the documents are and where the uh, annotation assignments are if I pop over into um, my sandbox here, again, I've got this kind of general, um, and I don't need this one open anymore, uh, general link to our class space. And uh, I've already come in as the instructor several times on here, so it's not starting me off at the get started page which I've, you know, I've got all green checks here. So for as far as Prusil is concerned, I've done all of the, you know, the initial setup stuff. Uh, you would upload your documents to your Perusal document library rather than putting them in Moodle. So I've got, uh, you know, here's a web page that I've captured. Here's a, another web page, Wikipedia. This PDF here that I've uploaded is actually an open, an OER textbook that I've used in the past for my uh, my geology course. So this is this is a PDF that's I don't know 350 400 pages long. I've uploaded it uh, and can build assignments around it. Um, I've um, set up um, a folder here. I can put uh, you know web pages or uploaded documents into that. So once you've got your course space set up. Uh, what I would recommend is load up your document library. If you've got, um, if you've got web links that you want your students to use, if you've got, um, PDFs of, uh, you know, book chapters, or in this case here, this openly licensed text, uh, bring those all in. Um, so for example, if I wanted to create another folder here that I'm going to call uh, astrobiology resources, click OK. I've got that folder. Now if I go into that folder, I can um, upload a document from my computer. So I go to add, upload a document. And let me go into my astrobiology course. 
and pick something that's not going to take forever to upload because we're in a workshop here. Okay, so I I saved a uh, well. That's kind of let's do this article from EOS. And where did it go? There it is. It's uploading. It's processing. And, uh, you know, for short resources, they'll upload very quickly. I didn't want to upload this uh, whole textbook again because it will take a while to actually upload it. And then what the what Perusall does is actually go through the uploaded document and, and kind of recognize the structure. So as we'll see when we're setting up uh, assignments, annotation assignments, uh, Perusall actually recognizes chapters and subchapters within this physical geology textbook. And that can be useful for when we're setting up assignments. Again, if we um, uh, Mars gullies, let's just see. Gullies on Mars, Wikipedia page. So, um, you know, I could uh, take that URL and come back in here into my perusal course document library, click add web page, paste in the URL, and Perusall is going out to Wikipedia to kind of take her, capture a snapshot of that web page. Um, hopefully, it's not going to choke on all of this extraneous text. Let me let me try that again, and just do. Let me just check, make sure this link. Okay. Let's get a simpler link here. Cancel that one. Add web page. Paste this in. Click OK. And OK, so it's still taking a little while. So that will churn through. But I've got a whole bunch of other resources in here that I could uh, add in. Again, as we've talked about, if you go to the Add button here, you can look for textbooks. Um, all right, let's do chemistry since Monica's on the. So you could actually adopt one of these textbooks for your courses, request the title, and then the publisher would work with Perusall and with you to make sure that it's a, that title is available in your Perusall document library. And then the students could, just as they would pay for the textbook, they would you know, pay to be able to to access material. You're not going to be able to provide your commercial textbooks to your students for free by, by putting them in your uh, perusal library. So here the Wikipedia article is chugging away. Um, so um, it's pretty straightforward. You can capture web pages, you can upload PDFs, uh, you could upload other kinds of documents and wrap uh, annotation assignments around. Any questions about getting documents and organizing them into your library in Perusall? Yeah, I actually have a question. What about OER materials? Well, this physical textbook, uh, physical geology textbook is OER material. Oh, okay. So, so. Um, this is a, a textbook project from uh, BC Open Campus out in British Columbia that uh, like I said, I've used in the past. Uh, because it's an openly licensed text, I didn't have to go through, I actually didn't have to go through the textbook option and negotiate with some publisher. It's already an, an openly licensed textbook. I could, I downloaded the PDF version of it so that I could put that PDF version up in my Perusall document library. 
I have another question. So if I if I have a textbook, so well, the chemistry textbooks are not for free, basically not uh, yeah yeah basically nothing. Um, so if I do that, do the students have to pay whoever is on my Moodle page, or if they get it maybe used and they want to have a hard copy? Um, yeah, I actually personally I'm not a big fan of promoting the textbook the commercial textbook option here um, because of those, uh, I, you know, Monica, I, I've not actually worked through those kinds of issues, but if you, okay, fine. I'm not doing if, it because if, it's, it's, as, it's available as an ebook. So whoever wants to have the ebook, they can buy the ebook. Yeah. Now, I mean, if you, if you use an OpenStax chem, you know, intro chem text, which there are a number of them and the OpenStax ones are pretty good. Uh, BC campus, Lumen, um, uh, Carnegie Mellon, the Open Learning Initiative, they've got a lot of open textbooks in, in chemistry as well. Any of those that were openly licensed, you could do what I did here, actually download the PDF, put it into your Peruse All document library, and students wouldn't have to worry about how, they're gonna, how they were going to get to it. So. Is there a special site that we can go to to search for OER materials? Uh, there are uh, uh, a few different ones. I can share around some uh, some options. Uh, SUNY OER Services maintains the both the Lumen and Carnegie Mellon Open Library Open, Open Learning Initiative libraries. There is uh, BC Open Campus. There is um, the Open Textbook Library out of University of Minnesota. So all of these resources are in the uh, OER uh, library guide that our librarians have put together, and I can send that around for for people to look at. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, let me just see. There's a couple of things in the chat. Okay, Maurice put some something in the, into the chat. Okay, so um, you've got your documents up. What's it like to create an assignment? you can actually create an assignment starting at the document and click on the assign. Um, but you can also go to the assignments tab and click add an assignment. And it will basically just step you through the process. So what material, what content do you want students to annotate? Well, let's Let's go through the different things that I've got up in my document library. If I just wanted them to annotate this Wikipedia page, I would select it. Mm -hmm. And your option would be pretty much, because it's a Wikipedia page, there's not a lot of internal structure. Your options would be to basically uh, assign the entire document. If instead, um, I selected that, OER textbook that I had uploaded. Remember I said that um, oh, yeah. Perusall is going to go through and try to identify. So maybe I want them um, just to do chapter one or maybe not even all of chapter one. Mm -hmm. Cool. It will say, okay, we've got now these um, nine pages that I've got selected here. Um, that's, that's your reading for this week. That's what I want you as a, as a class to read through and annotate. So I think, you know, that's a pretty nice feature there. And then you click the next step. Um, you know, when is it due? What are you going to call it? Um, and uh, I want to talk about the assignment name, uh, chapter one, annotation assignment. You can provide instructions, you know, focus on these parts of the reading and these topics as you're creating your, your annotations. You don't have to give instructions. You could have maybe a more global directions about how you want students to annotate resources, but you can article by article, uh, assignment by assignment, give specific instructions. Um, you can determine, well, you know, I really want only want everyone to do four annotations. Um, this is when students can start. 
Um, here I, I want to uh, assign specific students to do the annotation this week. Uh, assignment is fully anonymous or not. Assignment is optional or not. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you click Save Changes. You have created an annotation assignment. And if students come into, if students click on that link to come in uh, to the peruse all course space, they will see the list of annotation assignments that you have created. Uh, you can you can edit, you can extend the deadline for a given student, you can delete. Uh, because of all of the AI and all of the analytics that you know went into the Harvard project initially, there are, are all sorts of um, you know reports and so forth that can come out of um, of the assignment. What I want to do here, though, is copy the full title for the LMS. So I've copied that. Um, chapter one annotation assignment title to my clipboard. If I, let's close this tab down. If I close down my peruse all space, I could go to, let's say I want the students to do this in, in week three. Uh, pretend that topic three here is actually week three. I could click add an activity or resource and again select a peruse all activity. But this time, when I go to add the activity, if I take that title that I gave the assignment in Perusal and make that the title, the activity name for what I'm setting up here, and in this case, leave it so that grades are accepted from the tool, and make this say a 10 point a 10 point activity click save and return to course this is no longer just a generic uh, link into our perusal document space if i or if students now click on this link we're taken straight to the assignment that's been wrapped around that material. As the instructor, I see the instructor view, but let me let me go over here into the sandbox space as a student. And uh, if I click as a student on this, link to our generic peruse all space, I will see my student view of our shared document library annotation space. If I click on get started, oh, I'm, not, oh, I'm no, no longer pretending to be a student. Give me just a minute here. I need to do that. So let me, let me sign in here as my test student account. Okay, so now if I click on the link to our course space, it's going to take me over as this test student. And what I will see is, oh, here's the welcome message from my instructor. And I see uh, Landa's pretty lazy. He didn't um, customize it for our class here. I can see the documents that my instructors uploaded and I can see the assignments. Uh, that assignment's not yet available because I pushed it off too far in the future, which I shouldn't have done. Um, I can see my scores at least the peruse all scores. They may not have been pushed back to Moodle yet uh, and so forth. If I click on this, not sure if it'll let me in because the assignment's not open yet, but assuming this was an open assignment as a student, I could click on this link and be taken straight to the assignment. 
Oh, there it is. Okay. So, uh, you know, as a student or as a faculty member, if you're annotating, you have all of these tools for doing the annotation. Uh, in its broadest sense, geology is the study of the earth. Maybe I want to make some comment on that. Uh, these comments can be just plain text. Uh, I can insert images into the annotations that I'm, I'm adding as a student. I could even insert videos. I could link out, you know, maybe I want to set up a, uh, an annotation here that links out to some definition of geology somewhere maybe to uh, you know Wikipedia page or whatever uh, and then um, you know all of my annotations would be marked TL for test lambda and uh, as my instructor or as my um, annotation group colleagues go through they'll be able to see what what annotations I've I've added and and where because we did not make this one anonymous. So um, I know I don't want to keep people past. I, I was promising to get us all out of here at 445, but um, I think this is probably enough, uh, at least to give you a flavor of what's available here. Again, we've got two annotation tools in Moodle. We do have hypothesis, and I did a workshop earlier that was mostly focused on hypothesis. We've got perusal here. I would say if you're going to do this in, in any kind of a serious way, that the perusal space, where you can load all of your documents, have them organized, create the assignments around them, uh, is probably the, the, what, the option that I would recommend. If there's only, you know, if you only have one single web, web page that you want students to do a social annotation on, you could easily set that up using the hypothesis activity. And it would be, you know, it would be less full feature than this, but maybe you don't want all of these, these features. So uh, at this point, I think I'll stop sharing. Um, we'll deal with whatever, you know, Dara. Uh, Moody. Thank you. Uh, looking at that, the breakout, I mean, the, the annotation spot where they could put in a video or an image reminds me of discussion board formats to an extent. Can this be linked to a discussion board? Like the actual this, document to like a full class discussion board? Well, this would be kind of an alternate approach. You're either going to use the discussion forum or you're going to have a, a social conversation through annotations through this tool. I think the advantage of the social annotation tools, whether you use hypothesis or perusal, is that the discussions are much more focused very specifically on the text. Or actually, you, you, it doesn't have to be text. You could, you could upload a JPEG image. And uh, that could be what the students are annotating. And they could put hotspots on different parts of the image to uh, reflect where they want to comment on. Um, so, uh, I mean, you could, you could have a discussion forum in Moodle where you tell your students, read this article and then come here and discuss these questions. And if you're gonna have a more generalized discussion of the article, that might be the way to do it. But if you actually want them to get in and do a, if you want them to get into and do a textual analysis, or maybe you're giving them a piece of, uh, you know, uh, literature, so maybe a, a poem, which is just the, the narrative text, and you want them to annotate it, but you want them not to just to annotate it in terms of commentary on it, but you want them, you know, to, to go out and find images that that ca capture the flavor of the imagery that's in the poem and you want them to put an annotation on you know this particular metaphor in the poem and when their colleagues pop it up the the students will see you know this uh visual impression of of the imagery uh, that would be very tough to do with a discussion forum but on the other hand if what you want to do is uh, 
you know, I want them to read uh, Plato's Republic and we want, we're going to have a kind of general discussion of the themes, that would probably be better done in a discussion forum. Because although ideally students would refer to specific points that were made by Plato, they don't necessarily have to be physically tied to that text in, in, the, in the document. So <clears throat> should we um, be Zoom oriented again in the fall? Um, this tool would be excellent to put into the um, group, the rooms in Zoom. So uh, the students could work together annotating. I mean, you could do a Zoom session. You could have the breakouts. Uh, you could have the students in their breakout sessions where they're talking to each other and in another browser window they mm -hmm. could have your course page open yes yeah, split screen to the annotation assignment mm -hmm. and if they got really tricky um, one of them could actually share their screen mm -hmm. and have the um, the annotation assignment up on the you know shared screen in zoom the nice thing about the the social annotation though is that it does not have to be a synchronous activity mm -hmm. so if even if you're doing zoom sessions you probably want to have the students go through the readings the week before mm -hmm. and if they're all annotating the readings the week before when you come into the zoom session you may not have to spend as much time you know going through what that reading was all about but instead have more of a conversation. Uh, you know, Susan, you, you put this annotation into the article. Uh, could you talk a little bit more about what you uh, were, were trying to get at there? And then make your Zoom session more interactive, have a discussion of the initial analysis that actually took place in the annotation activity that was taking place ahead of the class. Yeah, because I teach research. So I'm like a little different than here's your textbook, read the textbook. Yeah. But what I what I need or I, I would like to do is to have the students um maybe not on their research, but to read a com you know like a common um common research about college students just so that they have something that they might be interested in. And then, you know, comments on the different areas within the peer reviewed article, which yep. um, they have not difficulty doing, but they don't do it thoroughly. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be mostly teaching non majors for my search for life in the universe class. And, you know, I don't treat it as a graduate level seminar class, but there are materials that, you know, students who don't have a background in biology and in physics and so forth have trouble getting through. And so I think that having them be able to kind of help each other mm. through the articles uh, will be helpful. Another, sorry, another thought I had was that um, if I paired them up with this um, and that they both had their own articles, even though they weren't their own research, they could swap them so that they did realize that they did have some commonalities with each, with the, within each other yeah. and that they but, could have like buddies within the class, which they don't seem to. Right. So uh, why, why don't you think about that some more and let's get together, um, you know, at some other time to, to kind of walk through how you might implement some of those ideas. Because one of the courses will be online. Yeah. So, so Dara and then Monica, you had a question too? Yeah, thanks. I'm just thinking for, um, I love the idea of the JPEG photo that they could comment on for dance. Could I also, if I uploaded a website or cap, you know, captured a website in my documents library, could they watch a video of, chore of choreography together and then add that link? <sighs> it doesn't really work for text. Yeah, we'd have to look into, um, what would be, I mean, you'd want to basically have them be able to apply annotations at different times of the video, right? So 
another tool for that might be VoiceThread. VoiceThread might be a better tool for that. The, uh, another tool that might be better for that is the uh, H5P interactive video tool. So we can look into those. Okay. Because what I was, you know, what was really challenging this spring going to Zoom was discussion, right? Like, yeah. have, you know, we watched the videos together on my shared screen, but getting them to actually comment and unmute themselves and, you know, that right. was really challenging. So if there's a, yeah, that's an H5P H5 interactive video? H5P. Uh, and um, send me an email to, to you know, ping, to ping me and remind me to get back to you on some of those options. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yep. Monica? Yeah, I have the, so I could use a PDF, oh, not a PDF. Uh, I could use a PowerPoint as a document and they could uh, just add something. So like drawing, well, in chemistry, they need to draw molecules and they need to draw mechanisms and stuff. So is that possible that students could draw something and another one draws also something? until they have yeah. a complete picture? I don't think, I don't think there are drawing tools in the editor window. In I saw Perusal. there was a pen. Oh, maybe there are, okay. There was a pen. I so we'd have to play around with that. The other option, Monica, would be to um, load this slide into a voice thread and students can certainly use the annotation tools to draw on the voice thread slide. I so used voice thread for the snow days and be honest, I hated it. Okay. <laughs> so maybe it's better now, but I really hated it. It always crashed on me. So I had to, had to record myself again and again. And, and then students basically didn't watch it. Well, I, I could see that who watched it and it was. Right. But you, it, it would be more a matter of, you know, not, not you recording anything, but posting the, um, the slide that you want them to annotate just as a, as a single voice thread slide and have them go in and use the drawing tools, which are pretty, the drawing tools are pretty good in, in voice. So to test it out myself, is it okay so that I use, well, I have a senior project two or so probably set up for next fall. I'm not using it, nobody's assigned to it. So I could use basically that Moodle page and I, I assign projects and then I also, and then I join as a student well, yeah, I, yeah. you can view the course as a student, but uh, since you're not a system administrator, you don't have the ability to masquerade as a specific student account. So I, again, let's, um, let's have some further conversation about what you want to do and we can, we can look at some different tools and Marie can help us uh, help out on this as well. Okay. Okay. So uh, again, both Hypothesis and Perusal are new. I've just added them the, this past semester. Um, we don't, we have a few faculty using them, but I think they bring a new kind of functionality to our Moodle courses that um, I can see being useful for different kinds of, of outcomes that we want for our students. Yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting, you know, another option, especially with the fall, how the fall's looking to be yep. again. This is great to have something just to help with discussion. That's really the biggest thing I found. Okay, so I'm going to um, stop the recording. We'll have this posted on our TLTC YouTube channel. And uh, if you, know, you want to direct colleagues to it or if you want to come back and review.